Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, September 5th, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I am recording from New York, New York. We got a couple of diaries to catch up here from this long weekend. The first one actually is from Friday about a new variant of Loki. Now, Loki has been back the last couple of weeks. The latest variant is in particular tricky in the way it sort of tricks users into installing the ransomware. It arrives as a fake Dropbox message that's actually done quite well. If you click on it, you're then asked to open an update notification which then instructs you to install what it calls a Heffler font. So essentially the user here believes that in order to read the message they have to install this font. Fonts of course are usually not considered to be executable or malicious but what you are actually downloading is an executable that will then download additional malware including the actual ransomware. So nothing really fundamentally new as far as exploits go, but really sort of a new social component to this particular version of Loki. Now, Pratt tried to run it in different browsers and it appears to adjust itself to different browsers, but he had some mixed results here. It didn't actually always run all the way to install the ransomware. But again, then this may be just the fact of one or two of the domains that are being involved here being already shut down by the time that he ran this particular sample. Now, one of the most difficult parts in security is to figure out if a particular system is not infected or a particular file is not malicious. Didier is taking a stab at this task and he is now two parts into his, I believe, three-part diary. First two parts, he hasn't really found anything yet in this particular PDF. It looks like a fairly regular PDF. It does have an image embedded, but nothing really else at this point the image actually looked valid well uh, we'll see in part three which should be published uh, later this week whether or not he'll find anything particular about this particular sample now rtp the real-time protocol that is used to encode voice over ip streams has long been known to be not secure after all we do have SRTP, which encrypts uh, these streams, but it was assumed that up to now that you actually had to have a man in the middle position in order to intercept these streams and decode them. Well, a bug in the very popular Asterix uh, PBX software does make it possible to intercept uh, these RTP streams, even if you're not actually in the middle between the recipient and the sender. The problem here is how RTP deals with NAT. In order to make it past NAT gateways, RTP has to figure out what is the external IP address for the host it's trying to reach. And in order to do that, it sends a packet out, waits for the response coming back, and then essentially checks what the IP address was that this response came back and assumes that this is the valid external IP address of the recipient. Well, uh, if you spoof these responses, then of course there is a good chance that your response will arrive before the valid response and now you have a chance to actually pretend that the recipient is at a different public IP address. There's absolutely no authentication for this exchange because there was no prior interaction between these hosts. The only real solution here is to turn off this NAT feature. Of course, this requires that your endpoints are all outside of NAT, which of course is usually not the case for any voice over IP equipment. It's usually behind NAT. Asterix did release a patch for it. It's not a complete patch. The only thing it really does is it limits the window of vulnerability here. It will just accept the first response. Once the first response is received, it will not accept any further responses. So uh, this at least limits the window of vulnerability to a few milliseconds essentially for whatever time it takes for that first response to come back. It does not really eliminate the vulnerability. So the real solution, use 
SRTP, but that of course requires you to configure keys and all of that good stuff. But this is something you probably should have done all along. Now, other RTP implementations are likely vulnerable as well, because this is really more a basic feature in how RTP works with NAT. So as long as you use RTP through NAT, you are likely vulnerable to this particular problem. And then we got another leftover from last week, a number of DSL modems being used in particular by AT&T are susceptible to a hard-coded administrator password. These modems are exposed via SSH, so an attacker could log in via SSH, or a different account also with a fixed password can be used via HTTPS. One sad part about this particular vulnerability is that the discoverer did not first notify AT&T, but instead made these passwords public right away. As an end user, there isn't really much that you can do other than hope and wait that AT&T has already pushed an update to your modem. All the affected modems are produced by Eris, so if you're using ATNU Uverse with an Eris modem, then you're possibly affected. Well, that's it for today, so thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.